Live from the 412, it's Platt's point of view, y'all. Let's go. Hey, welcome back to Platt's point of view, y'all. Another part, another installment of Platt's point of view. Glad you could join me. So on this show, we're going to start off talking boxing. How about my man Shakur Stevenson? I talked about him a few weeks ago on one of the shows, and he became the first male from the 2016 Olympics to win a world title. Going into Shakur Stevenson's recent fight against Joette Gonzalez, there was a lot of trash talking and bad blood. Stevenson, with his defense, showed once again why he's the best featherweight in boxing. Gonzalez couldn't get anything going against Stevenson. Stevenson has excellent footwork, which helped him dodge everything Gonzalez threw his way. The two boxers didn't like each other coming into the fight, mainly because Stevenson is dating Gonzalez's youngest, younger sister. Stevenson used his jab and a few body shots to get points and build a nice lead over Gonzalez. By the eighth round, I pretty much gave the fight to Shakur Stevenson. He would win by unanimous decision, 119 to 109, making Shakur Stevenson the WBO featherweight champ. He's now 13 and 0 as a featherweight. After the fight, Shakur Stevenson called out England's Josh Warrington, who's 30 and 0 with seven knockouts, and he's ranked as the number one boxer at 126 pounds. Shakur Stevenson said he'll even go to England to fight Warrington in his home, his home country. So. Keep an eye on that and stay tuned. Next up, we got some Hasman talk, y'all. Yeah, Hasman trophy talk. Here we go. Going into week nine of college football, which means Heisman talk is heating up rapidly, y'all. More meaningful games every single week now. So the Hasman spotlight increases. Here's my top candidates. First, you got a... Uh, LSU quarterback Joe Burrow. So far, Joe Burrow has 29 touchdown passes to just three enters. He's completing 78% of his passes. He's already set the LSU single season passing touchdown record, and the season is only half over. Man, that's amazing. LSU still has a date with Alabama November 9th. We will learn a lot about Joe Burrow after that game. I can't wait to watch it. So November 9th, keep an eye on that. Keep an eye on Joe Burrow against Alabama November 9th. That's going to determine a whole lot with this Heisman Trophy talk, y'all. Next up, Oklahoma quarterback Jalen Hurts. So far, Hurts is completing 73% of his passes, and he's averaging over 100 yards rushing with 10 rushing touchdowns. Hurts has thrown for over 2,000 yards with 20 touchdowns to three enters so far this year. And he has over 700 rushing yards, and he's averaging eight yards a carry. So keep an eye on Jalen Hurts, too. He's definitely making a case, and he's balling out right now. So we're going to see. Next is Alabama quarterback Tua Tagovailoa. Tua is averaging over 300 yards passing per game. He has 27 touchdowns with only two interceptions. That's, man, that's taking care of the ball. Tua is currently out with an ankle injury. Some call him a left-handed Drew Brees. He's another one. November 9th against LSU will determine Tua Tagovailoa's fate. So we will see as far as the Heisman race goes what Tua has to offer. It's on, man. And last but not least, don't sleep Ohio State quarterback Justin Fields. Another guy I talked about on here. Justin Fields has 30 total touchdowns and only three turnovers this season. Oh, my goodness. Fields is completing 67% of his passes. He has 24 touchdown passes to only one interception. Now, that's keeping the ball safe. Ohio State is still undefeated, too. Keep that in mind. But... When it's all said and done, I'm taking Jalen Hurts to win the Hasman Trophy barely over LSU quarterback Joe Burrow. So we're going to see if I'm right, y'all. 
It's going to be real interesting these next couple of weeks, and I can't wait because I love Heisman talk. Next up, I got another draft gem for y'all. Yeah, I'm starting to like these draft gems. We got a North Texas quarterback, Mason Fine. He's 5'11", 190. Mason Fine is the two-time Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year, 2017-2018. He's a two-time first-team All-Conference USA, 2017 and 2018. Also, he's an All-Conference USA freshman team. In 2016, he made that. And he's North Texas all-time leading passer. Plus, he's the two-time Oklahoma Gatorade High School Player of the Year, 2014 and 2015. Last season, Mason Fine completed 64% of his passes. He threw for over 3,700 yards, 27 touchdowns to five enters. This season, he has about 20 touchdowns to just six enters. At 5'11", Mason Fan will be knocked by NFL scouts wondering, is he tall enough? Come on, man. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy. Mason throws with touch, anticipation, and he's quite mobile. He has good ball placement. And he has a nice, strong arm. I really like his arm. He can wing it. Mason Fan has appeared on NFL players' draft list, on the NFL watch list. If he continues to produce, look for Fan to get a look come NFL draft time and get drafted. I think he's going to get drafted. I like him a lot. Mason Fan. People's comparing him to Case Keenum. So keep an eye on my draft, Jim. Mason Fan, y'all. Quarterback, North Texas. Okay. Some NFL talk for y'all. Look for quarterbacks Jameis Winston and Marcus Mariota to play elsewhere next season. Jameis Winston is a turnover machine, straight turnover machine. He has over 68 enters and over 19 fumbles lost in his career. He is too indecisive. He holds on to the ball too long. Jameis Winston will not be playing for Tampa next year. Next is Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota has a tendency to hold on to the ball, settling for too many checkdowns. Marcus Mariota has yet to throw for 3,500 yards in a season. His career touchdown total of 76 ranks last among quarterbacks that have started at least 60 games since 2015. Look for both teams to address the quarterback position in the offseason. Damn. That's crazy. Next up. My man, Deshaun Watson, quarterback for the Houston Texans. So far, Watson has 16 touchdowns to five enters. He has 105, 100 pardon me, he has a 105 quarterback rating, completing 69% of his passes. I'll say it again. Deshaun Watson's college coach, Debo Sweeney, said Watson is the Mike Jordan of football. And once again, we saw why. Watson avoided a sack spinning out of the pocket, and surviving a kick to the eye by a Raiders defender and still threw a touchdown pass to Darren Fells against the Raiders recently. Watson with one eye is better than most quarterbacks, I'm telling you. Time and time again, Watson keeps delivering in clutch moments. I think he has ice in his veins. This boy is a winner, great leader, great player. Playoff time, I don't want to play Deshaun Watson at all. No, no. Deshaun Watson, watch out, y'all. I'm telling you, because this guy in them Houston Texans, they are coming strong. Pay attention. Next up, we got Josh Gordon, who was recently placed on injured reserve for the rest of the season. The Patriots waived him, and he just signed with the Seattle Seahawks. So this is going to be real interesting to see how this plays out. Seattle quarterback Russell Wilson as you know, Josh Gordon is like a risk and a reward. You know, talk about the drug suspensions, the suspensions from the NFL, the injuries. He's going from team to team. New England got rid of him. I don't know what's going on, but I like Josh Gordon a lot. And hopefully he can ball out. Pete Carroll can, uh, can get the magic out that guy and that, uh, that nice wide receiver skill set he has. So Josh Gordon, good luck. Next up, how about Vikings running back Dalvin Cook? Cook finally healthy from that torn left ACL. Delvin Cook is a pure dual threat, similar to Saints running back Alvin Kamara. 
Delvin Cook currently leads the NFL in rushing at over 800 yards, and he averages five yards a carry with nine touchdowns. We finally see Delvin Cook's explosiveness. He is nice. I liked him coming out of Florida State, so pay attention to him in the Minnesota Vikings. Yes, I think their arrow's pointing up. Next up, we got my man, my favorite corner in the league right now, Bills cornerback Tredavious White. The, the Buffalo Bills, I think they found their shutdown corner. White is only 24 years old. He's a third-year pro. He has three enters this season so far. He's an emerging playmaker for the Buffalo Bills. Tredavious White is the most difficult cornerback for wide receivers and quarterbacks to face week to week. So far this season, he's limited quarterbacks to 44.8 completion percentage while leading the league in defender passer rating at 26.6. Tredavious White is an instinctive, competitive corner with great ball skills. A top cornerback in Buffalo's secondary, he is playing well. Tredavious White is the big reason why Buffalo's secondary is balling out right now. So pay attention to Tredavious White, y'all, cornerback Buffalo Bills. And next up, my favorite, old school, new school, y'all. Old school, new school, youngest take notice. Old school, new school, youngest take notice. Old school, new school, youngest take notice. Old school, new school, y'all. Yeah. Old school is another one of my favorites. We talking about Dale Ellis, the six seven swing man that used to play for the Seattle Supersonics. Before Steph Curry, before Reggie Miller, before Dennis Scott or even Ray Allen, there was Dale Ellis, the first player in the NBA to hit 1,000 threes, the original three-point king. Ellis played for six NBA teams, Seattle, Milwaukee, Denver, Charlotte, San Antonio, and Dallas. He was an NBA All-Star in 1989. He was All-NBA third team in 1989. He was the most improved player in 1987. He was the NBA three-point shootout champion in 1989. And in college, coming out of Tennessee, he was the two-time SEC player of the year, and Tennessee retired his number 14 jersey in 1988-89. No, pardon me. They retired his jersey at Tennessee, I'm sorry, in 1988-89 with the Seattle Supersonics. He set a franchise record with 2,253 points in a season. That record stood for 21 seasons until a guy named Kevin Durant broke it. Dale Ellis has scored over 19,000 points for his career. He averaged 15 points a game for his career. He's made over 1,700 three-pointers. He's a 40% three-point shooter for his career. Dale Ellis was a straight sniper, man. Oh my goodness, old school Dale Ellis, y'all. Youngest take notice. New school, former North Carolina point guard, now of the Chicago Bulls, Kobe White. He's about 6'5". White plays the game in straight turbo mode. You hear me? Straight turbo mode, y'all. Coming out of North Carolina, he was second team all ACC. He was a McDonald's All-American in 2018. He was drafted by the Chicago Bulls with the seventh pick of this year's NBA draft. At North Carolina, he averaged 16 points a game, three rebounds, four assists, and he shot 35% from three points, from the three-point line. Kobe White is a scoring point guard who plays up-tempo at a blazing speed. He can catch fire as a shot maker and create for himself with a mean step back and nifty ball handling. He's a decent passer who finds teammates. Kobe White can score from all three levels. Kobe White is a solid on-ball defender who deflects balls by getting in the passing lanes. After an impressive freshman year at North Carolina, Kobe White has the potential to be an NBA star. His score first mentality will equal NBA success. I'm telling you. Kobe White, point guard, Chicago Bulls, new school, y'all, new school. Youngest take notice. Yeah. Next up, keep an eye on the Memphis Tigers college basketball. Led by former NBA All-Star head coach Penny Hardaway. It's no secret Memphis is one of the most talented teams in the country. Their freshman class has seven recruits 
ranked in the top 100, led by number one recruit, center James Wiseman. They'll probably start five, they'll probably start five freshmen. That sound familiar? <laughs> it's a rare thing in college basketball these days. So look for some ups and downs early on. But I got a funny feeling once March rolls around, the Memphis Tigers will be a force to be reckoned with. With all that talent and Penny Hardaway coaching, I'm predicting at least a Sweet 16 appearance. Beware of the Memphis Tigers come college basketball season, y'all. Memphis Tigers head coach Penny Hardaway. I like y'all a lot. Next up, another guy that probably nobody's familiar with. This guy's probably a diamond in the rough. You watching Syracuse basketball? Keep an eye out on freshman guard 6'2", Joe Gerard III. His nickname is JG3, like RG3. He's a three-star recruit from Glen Falls, New York. That's the same area that produced Jimmer Fredette. Gerard is the first high school player to average 48 points per game or more in two seasons. He averaged 50 points per game as a junior, and he averaged 48 points per game as a senior. He had 26 40-point games, 15 50-point games, and he had one 69-point game. Oh, my God. Man, he was New York State's all-time leading scorer as a junior, passing Lance Stevenson. As a junior, he was already, leading the, he already was the leading scorer in the state of New York. That's remarkable. He's one of the most productive high school scorers of all time with ridiculous range. Y'all hear me? Ridiculous range. Y'all got to check him out. So Syracuse basketball, check out Joe Gerard III. This guy could shoot the lights out. Oh, man, I hope he gets some playing time. He should get some playing time. And, yeah, I think you guys will fall in love with Joe Gerard III. So ball out, Syracuse, Joe Gerard III. I'll be checking you out. Next up. Shout out to Hopewell graduate, Aliquippa native, Whippio product, shooting guard, Shatori Walker Kimbro of the Washington Mystics. She recently won a WNBA title with Washington. Congrats to Walker Kimbro. Good luck next season and enjoy your off season as a champion. So Walker Kimbro, good luck. I'm glad you got that WNBA title back home and keep balling. Maybe you guys can repeat next year. I'll be keeping an eye on on the Washington Mystics. Ball out, Walker Kimbro. Next up, your high school spotlight. I first want to give a shout out to the Westinghouse Bulldogs. The Westinghouse Bulldogs are the City League football champs. Young Deion Hayes, running back Michael Massey, and the rest of the team, they beat you prep 12-2 to bring home the City League championship. So good luck in the States, y'all. Shout out to Westinghouse High School, and hopefully y'all can make a crazy run in the States. I'm with y'all. Good luck. Way to go. So next up with the high school spotlight, we got a gateway running back safety, Derek Davis. He's a five-star recruit. Davis had over 1,200 rushing yards last season and 20 touchdowns. This season, he has over... 1,000 yards rushing, over 11 touchdowns. No, 15 touchdowns. He's averaging 11 yards a carry. Pardon me. He's one of the most heavily recruited, versatile athletes in Western Pennsylvania in years. He's a serious threat on both sides of the ball. He's ranked as the number two player in PA for the 2021 class. At running back, he's special. He got good speed. He's strong. He has good agility, and he has nice balance. At safety, he covers a lot of ground, he plays physical, and he has tremendous ball skills. This Derrick Davis kid has offers from Alabama, Clemson, Michigan, Pitt, Penn State, Texas a and and about a half dozen more. So Derrick Davis, I'll be paying attention to you at Gateway, and good luck next season, and good luck this season, because I think you guys are still in the state playoffs and you're playing right now, so ball out, man. I'll be checking you out. Next up, University Prep running back linebacker 62190, Michael Snowden. Snowden is a three star recruit. He's ranked as the 26th best player in Pennsylvania this season. Snowden has over 1,100 yards rushing, over 16 touchdowns this season, and he averaged seven yards a carry. He also played a little bit of wide receiver. He's dynamic as a pass rusher with blazing speed as a linebacker. He also ran track 
and ran a 10.8 and 100 meter dash. So this guy's a pretty good athlete. Michael Stone is a dazzling running back linebacker that's been plowing through the city league. Next year, Snowden will continue his education and his football career at the University of Akron. He committed to the Akron Zips in June. So good luck, Michael Snowden. Ball out. I'm with you, man. Can't wait to see you play. And last but not least, our Turn Up and Get Lit segment of the day. Turn up and get lit. It's time to turn up and get lit, man, for real. Turn up and get lit. Turn up and get lit person goes to... Another guy I've been paying attention to, and I'm just waiting for this. I'm waiting for this, uh, for this car to start up with this guy, man. Start that engine up. I'm talking about Milwaukee Bucks shooting guard Dante DiVincenzo. 6'5". Injuries have derailed Dante DiVincenzo's rookie season. He only played in 27 games. The 17th overall pick of the 2018 NBA draft is still a relatively unknown to most. His full talent hasn't been on display since that 31-point outburst in the national championship game where he was the most outstanding player of the NCAA tournament in the Final Four. DiVincenzo has athleticism, shooting, and playmaking ability. Unfortunately, he couldn't provide those things consistently his rookie year because he only averaged four points a game. He shot 40% from the floor and 26% from three-point range. DiVincenzo. I need you to step up this season, man, and become the two guard that we saw at Villanova. I'm a big fan of yours. I'm a big fan of your game. And if you're healthy, I expect a breakout second season. Your nickname is the Big Rag Goo. So guess what? I need to see that sauce in your game, man, that sauce. So please, Dante DiVincenzo, turn up and get lit. Dante DiVincenzo, Milwaukee Bucks guard, turn up and get lit, man. I can't wait to watch you neither, man. So um, hopefully you enjoyed another episode of Past Point of View. And I'll be back with more and more and more and keep coming. So God bless everybody. Have a good one. Take it easy. Out. <laughs>